وَلِنْ لَذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ And for those who deny their Lord is عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمْ The punishment of the blaze. وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ And wretched is the destination. How is it wretched? How is it evil? How is it bad? Because it will humiliate those who enter it. إِذَا أُلْقُوا فِيهَا When they are thrown into it. Why thrown? Because no one will go willingly. And what this also shows is that Jahannam is deep. They will be thrown into it. Meaning when they will be put in, they will fall. Jahannam is deep. إِذَا أُلْقُوا فِيهَا سَمِعُوا لَهَا شَهِيقًا They will hear from it a shahiq. Shahiq, the sound of breathing. When you take a breath in, when you inhale, the sound that is made, that is shahiq. But shahiq is also used for a long breath. Like for example, you know, one is to go, that's it. You just take a short breath. The other is, it goes for long. You can hear the sound going for a long time. This is shahiq. They will hear the sound of inhaling, a long inhaling, as if hell will suck them in. وَهِيَ تَفُورُ While it will boil up. تَفُورُ فَوَوْرَ فَوْرُ is to boil, bubble, gush forth, burst forth. Meaning, hell will boil with them. The sound of boiling. Hellfire will make loud, frightening noises. And as people will enter it, it will burst with them, boiling and raging fiercely. Because people are fuel of hell. Isn't it? وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةُ A fire whose fuel are men and stones. What happens when you add fuel to the fire? What happens? Does it increase? وَهِيَ تَفُورُ As they will be thrown into it, it will inhale, suck them in. And as they're sucked in, it will rage even more fiercely. It will boil up and increase even more. وَهِيَ تَفُورُ And you see especially the sound that is mentioned here, shahiq, this is frightening. Abdullah ibn Umar said that in hell will be sounds of screaming, howling and wailing. Noise. تَكَادُ تَمَيَّزُ مِنَ الْغَيْضِ تَكَادُ It almost تَمَيَّزُ It will burst, it will explode مِنَ الْغَيْضِ Out of anger. تَمَيَّزُ is from ميم يَا زَي ميز And ميز is to distinguish or to separate one thing from the other. تَمْيِيز Is the age of discernment. Meaning when a person can tell this is okay, this is not okay. This is this and this is that. They can tell Things apart. This is tamiz. So tamayuz. Burst forth. Meaning parts of it will break away from others. Because that's what happens in an explosion, right? Things break. Takadu tamayyazu. It is said, Fulanun yakadu yatamayyazu min al That so and so would burst asunder out of rage. They would explode out of anger. Hell will almost explode out of ghayl, anger. Why is hell angry? Angry at who? At those in it. And if it's angry, when they are thrown into it, then what do you think it will do with them? Think about it. When there's someone who is so angry that they're at the verge of exploding, what actions do you expect of them? Are they just going to sit like that? No. That energy that is boiling, that is increasing inside, it's going to be released. So if it's so angry that it's at the verge of exploding, at the time when they're admitted into the hellfire, what do you think it will do with them? How will it treat them? تَكَادُ تَمَيَّزُ مِنَ الْغَيْضِ What does this show? Hell is merciless, vengeful. Towards those who will be thrown into it. كُلَّمَا أُلْقِيَ فِيهَا فَوْجٌ Every time a company will be thrown into it. فَوْج What is فَوْج? An army 
It's used for an army or a large group of people. So what does this mean? That people will be thrown into hell in great numbers. And how? In groups. Because a person cannot do wrong just on his own. He needs the support of others. He needs the shelter of others. He needs the approval of others. He needs that, you know, level of faith that, okay, I'm not alone in this. There are others who are doing it also. And really, if you think about it, when, when we do something wrong, how do we justify it? What do we say? Exactly. They're also doing it. Everybody does it. I'm not the only one. Fawj. People will be thrown into hell in groups because al-mar'u ma'aman ahabba. A person will be with those whom he loves. A person is on the religion of his friend. So, here, كُلَّمَا أُلْقِيَ فِيهَا فَوْجٌ سَأَلَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا Its keepers, the keepers of hell will ask. And who are the keepers of hell? Angels. They're angels. So they will ask, أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَذِيرٌ Did there not come to you a warner? Meaning, your being admitted into the fire is astonishing. Didn't anybody ever tell you, what are you doing here? Is this really a place that you should come to? That you should end up in? What happened? What went wrong? Weren't you told? Weren't you warned? Weren't you made aware? How could you get here? How could you choose to come here? أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ نَذِيرٌ What happened? قَالُوا They will say, بَلَا Of course, warners did come to us. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent warners and warnings to all people. In Surah Fatir, Ayah 24, Allah says, وَإِن مِّنْ أُمَّةٍ إِلَّا خَلَا فِيهَا نَذِيرٌ There is no community except that a warner passed in it. Every group of people was warned. قَدْ جَاءَنَا نَذِيرٌ فَكَذَّبَنَا But we denied. وَقُلْنَا مَا نَزَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And we said that Allah has not revealed anything. We denied that warner and we denied the fact that God even sent any warning. إِنْ أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا فِي ضَلَالٍ كَبِيرٍ You are only in great error. They called the rightly guided messengers misguided. And not just misguided, but in great misguidance. What does it show us? That many times people who are upon the truth are portrayed as people who are upon upon falsehood. People who are doing good work are portrayed as people who are creating mischief. So what is our duty? To just go with the flow? Whatever people are saying, we pass that on also? Whatever rumors we hear, we gobble them up and we pass them on? Is that what we should do? No. Use reason. What is this person saying? What are they doing? What are they promoting? إِنْ أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا فِي ضَلَالٍ كَبِيرٍ وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ And they will say, if only we had heard, we had been listening, أَوْ نَعْقِلُ Or we had been using our reason, مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ We would not have been among the companions of the blaze. What does this show? That in order to be rightly guided, what do we have to use? What do we have to use? Our hearing and our intellect, our reasoning also. And notice how hearing is mentioned first, then reasoning. Hearing, listening, is one of the easiest things to do. And it's actually many times unavoidable. Isn't it? I mean, if you're reading something, you've got to stay alert. Right? Your eyes will get tired, but you're reading. But when it comes to listening, when it comes to hearing, sometimes you don't want to hear, but you can't turn your ears off. Isn't it? You can't do that. If the light is bothering you, you can close your eyes. But if the noise is bothering you, can you shut your ears? Can you? No, you can't. So it's one of the easiest things to do. To look at something, you have to pay attention to it. But to hear something, to listen to it, Yes, you have to pay attention to comprehend it. But many times we catch sounds. How? Consciously or deliberately? No. So, لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَعْقِلُ If only we had heard and we had used reason. What does this mean then? That in order to remain guided, we have to keep listening. And keep thinking. 
and those who refuse to listen are only depriving themselves. We learned that the people of Makkah, what would they do? They wouldn't listen to the Qur'an themselves, and they would also prevent others. They would say, لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ وَالْغَوْ فِيهِ Don't even listen to this Qur'an, make noise during its recitation, so that the sound is drowned out. In Surah Al-Anfal, Ayah 21, Allah says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَهُمْ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ Don't be like those people who say that we have heard, but in reality, they have not. So, لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُوا أَوْ نَعْقِلُوا مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِي See, we hear, we think, we internalize, we change, we act. So it begins from where? From listening. فَاعْتَرَفُوا بِذَنْبِهِمْ So then they will confess their sins, they will admit their sins when confession will be of no avail. When a person admits their sin, they're showing a lot of humility. Isn't it? And this humility is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. But at this time, in hell, when people will admit their sins, will it work? No, it won't. Allah says, فَسُحْقَ لِأَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ Away. Be away. Get away. Remain away. For who? For the أصحاب السَّعِيرِ For the people of the blaze. What does suhq mean? Suhq means bu'd, distance. It is said suhq allahu, meaning away with him. It is said ashaqahu Allah, meaning may Allah destroy him. Because when a person is removed far away from Allah's mercy, then there is only destruction for them. So they will admit their sins, but they're admitting too late. It's too late. And because of that, their confessions will not help. Their confessions will not save them. You know, for example, if there is a person who's been proven guilty and they have been sentenced, and then they say, I am sorry. Is that sorry accepted? No, it's too late. Because they've been proven guilty. The sentence is given. There's no going back. And now they say that I feel really bad about what I did. Please forgive me. Don't send me to jail. Exactly. The damage has been done. So, فَسُحْقًا لِأَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ What does this mean then? We must admit our sins when? Now. And think about it. If we are too afraid to admit them today, we're too afraid to even recognize and acknowledge and face our sins today. With time, isn't it going to get worse? You know, for example, when you've made a mistake and you immediately accept it and you say, I'm sorry. Very easy to fix it. But if you delay even a day or two, one week, one year, then what happens? You just go deeper and deeper into that problem. So, فَسُحْقَ لِأَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ Indeed, those people who يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ Who fear their Lord بِالْغَيْبِ in the unseen. Meaning they have not seen their Lord. Yet they fear Him. And they fear Him when? When they are alone. Meaning when others are absent. When no people are around. When no people are watching them. Still they are afraid of Allah. And because they are afraid of Allah, that's why they are careful about what they do. And they avoid what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not approve of. Generally what happens? We do good stuff when who's around? When who's around? People are around. Right? Like for example, you're driving and you really want to drive super fast and you really want to, you know, do things which are not acceptable. But then what happens? If you know that the officer, police officer is around or there's cameras or whatever, what happens? You become? You become? Careful. Isn't it? You stay within your lines. But what happens? If you know or if you think that there is no officer around. Nobody's gonna catch you. In this part of the road, there's no cameras. What happens? Usually what happens? We know what we do. Right? You're really angry. And you wanna say some things. But there are people around you. What are you gonna do? You're gonna control your tongue. Isn't it? But when nobody's around you, and you're getting angry, 
and there's that child or that person who's never going to say anything, what are you going to say? What words will come out of your mouth? We're in a public place. How do we walk? How do we talk? How do we dress up? And how do we do the same things when we are alone? So usually when people are around, we become careful about our actions. Isn't it? Allah says over here, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who fear their Lord when they're alone. So whatever they're doing, it is sincere. And if they can fear Allah when they're alone, this means that they can also fear Allah in all other situations. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً For them is forgiveness. وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ And a great reward. None of us has seen Allah. Right? But what are we supposed to do? Fear Him. Even though we have not seen Him. How much our deeds show that. In Surah Fatir, Ayah 28, Allah says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ Complete the ayah. Ulama. It is the knowledgeable amongst the servants of Allah who fear Him. And we see here that when a person knows Allah, that Allah is the Malik, He is the owner, and I am the one who is owned, He is the master, and I am the slave, then this knowledge and awareness will create true fear in a person. And this fear, this will lead to forgiveness and a great reward. Why forgiveness? What's forgiveness got to do with fearing Allah when you're alone? Why forgiveness for that? Because there's sincerity here. There is sincerity that a person has known who his Lord is, so he remembers him even when he's alone. He doesn't forget him. And a great reward for this. The Prophet ﷺ said that there are three things that save a person. And amongst them is khashiyatullahi fi sirri wal alaniya. Fear of Allah where? In private and in public. This is something that will save a person. How will it save him? It will save him from committing wrong. Which will ultimately save him from being of the Ashabu Sa'ir. The Prophet ﷺ said that there are seven whom Allah will shade under his shade on the day of judgment or under his throne. And of those seven is who? A person who remembered Allah when he was alone and in that remembrance his Eyes filled with tears. For this khashya is ajrun kabir. There is a great reward. The Prophet ﷺ said that no man will enter the fire who weeps out of the fear of Allah. The person who cries out of the fear of Allah will not enter hell. And the Prophet ﷺ said, this will not happen until the milk returns to the udders. Can milk ever return? No. To the place that it came from? No. Cannot happen. And just like that, the person who cries out of Allah's fear will not enter hellfire. The Prophet ﷺ said that there was a person who had never performed any good deed except for tawheed. That's all he had done. That he believed in Allah. Allah alone did not associate any partners with him in any way. And this person, when his time of death came, he asked his family to, that when he would die, they should burn his body and wait for a windy day and then go by the sea and then blow the ashes away. So they did that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had his body come together. And he asked him, why did you want this? And the man said, out of fear of you that I was too afraid to even face you. So because of that fear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him pardon. He was so afraid. So khashiya of Allah really is a source of forgiveness and a great reward. See, the key to ahsan amal is what? Khashiya of Allah. When a person fears Allah in the true sense, real genuine fear, 
then that makes a person careful about what they're doing. And when you stop and you think and you choose, you consciously choose what you're going to do, oftentimes you make the right choice. But when you make these decisions in haste, oh, I'm so irritated, I'm just going to say it. Right? I'm so upset, I'm just going to do this. When you do things in haste, you don't get time to think. Khashya of Allah, fear of Allah, forces you to slow down and stop and think before you open your mouth. Stop and think before you do what you're going to do. Stop and think before you put on what you're going to put on. Stop and think before you walk the way you're going to walk. It's the khashya of Allah that is the key to ahsan amal. You know, out of the fear of Allah, that is when you also bring sincerity. Isn't it? Otherwise, what will happen? You're doing a good deed apparently, but you're doing it, you know, in your heart there's a thing people are watching. They're going to like this. But fear of Allah will make you realize that no, I'm not doing this for people. I better do this for Allah. We are so desensitized nowadays. The fear of Allah is not at all coming. I ask so many people, he said, we will die, we will see, then when we will see. They are not fearing Allah, unless until someone see the death. And I was just uh, talking to some girls, they said, how the fear of Allah can come? So I died on many steps, because nobody is fearing of Allah nowadays. So one step was that you may, must seek the dua. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha. Okay, good. Ask Allah. Yeah. Please Allah, give me your fear. Yes. And number two, there's another ayah in Surah Hajj. Wa yu azim sha'ayr Allah. Wa man yu azim sha'ayr Allah. When, 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 you, are, when you are respecting the sha'ayr Allah, symbol of Allah, Allah gives you taqwa. That is from the taqwa of the hearts. Yeah, taqwa, taqwa al-kulub. Yeah. So there are many steps and uh, punctual in pray, be careful with your wudu and all that. Then fear of Allah will come. Fear of Allah is not coming at all nowadays. You know, young people, they said, no way. See, when can you be afraid of something? When you have knowledge. Isn't it? Simple thing. Driving with your phone in your hand. Hmm? This can have serious consequences. Isn't it? But who is it that will put that phone down? Who? The one who knows that the consequences are serious. Right? And the one who doesn't know, they have no idea. That's the first step. Knowledge is the first step. The one who doesn't know will not take that right action. Yes, then it happens that even with knowledge, people will do what is wrong. But the first step towards fear is what? The right fear is knowledge, awareness. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ ulama. And the thing is that when you know Allah the way you should know Him, what does that mean? You know that He is watching you no matter where you are. Right? And that there is no avoiding and no lying and no deceiving when it comes to dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to a police officer, yes, it's possible they won't see you. You've got the phone in your hand, but it's possible the officer won't be there. And even if they're right next to you, they won't see you because they're a human being. And even if they catch you, you can still go fight the ticket, isn't it? You can still, you know, lie or cheat or deceive in some way to save yourself. When you know Allah, you know that you can never run away from Him. When you realize that biyadihil mulk, until and unless this awareness comes to a person, khashya cannot come. And if khashya doesn't come, actions will not change. I think part of... Uh like fear of Allah is trying to keep at least you know some of our good deeds secret you know to between us and Allah and nowadays it's so hard to do that like with social media or like how much we talk just in general you know just trying to do that we should make it a point to try to keep some deeds secret between us and Allah that's a good way